We have collected a lot of evidence so far, and we're not done yet. But we can maybe answer some more questions about our moon jelly populations. How can we apply all of this understanding about births and deaths and things that affect them to what could possibly be going on with our moon jellies? What information do we need about the populations in the ecosystem where the moon jellies live to help us understand what could be going on? Here is the Glacier Sea food web. I want you to pause the video for a moment and again, find somebody to check in with. What is this food web telling you about the moon jelly and the things that it is interacting with? What is the moon jelly population eating? What is it being eaten by? How does that help us to know what kind of data we might need to be looking for? Make sure you pause and go ahead and think about this before moving on. Okay, so I'm sure many of you have figured out and maybe you had to go back and look at our article or look back at another video to figure out how to read that food web. That's totally okay. I want you to be doing those kinds of things um, to review and make sure you're understanding how this works. But I think we all can see right here our moon jelly population. Here is the thing that we are trying to understand more about. We know that we need to look more into the births and deaths that these moon jellies are having. And something that help, might help us do that is by understanding what is going on in the population that eats the moon jelly and also the population that the moon jelly eats. Now, from this food web, we can see that the moon jelly is receiving energy storage molecules from this population called the zooplankton. This is the moon jelly's resource population. And we know that this has an effect on the number of births that the moon jelly population can have. We also know that the moon jellies are giving energy storage molecules to the sea turtles. This is their consumer population. And as we just realized, this might be having an effect on the number of deaths that are occurring in the moon jelly It's going to be really helpful for us to take a moment to see if we have any data or evidence about these populations. We already know that the moon jellies were stable and then began to increase in about 2000. Now it's time to think about what might be occurring that caused this to start. I want you to pause the video for a moment and find somebody to check in with. What is your prediction about the data that we are about to look at? Many of you had ideas at the beginning about what might be affecting the moon jelly populations. Is your idea still the same? Has it changed? What are you thinking? Before we take a look at the evidence, I want you to make a prediction about what we might see in the populations of zooplankton and sea turtles in the glacier sea ecosystem. All right, now it's time to take a look at some evidence and put all our understanding and learning to work here. We have three pieces of evidence about the zooplankton populations and the sea turtle populations. If you would like, I would encourage you to pause the video on each evidence card. Jot down some information or annotations about what you're seeing. Does it seem like a reliable piece of evidence? Remember that our evidence criterion for population sampling is that the samples represent as much of the whole as possible. Also, look for information about what is happening to the populations based on the evidence. It might help to sketch out a graph just like we have been doing for the moon jellies to give you a visual of what is occurring to these populations over time. I'm so excited that you now are going to put all your learning to the test by looking at these different evidence pieces. 
This is the work of scientists. I'll check back in with you in a couple of minutes after you've had some time to look at the evidence. Don't forget to pause the video on each evidence card to think for yourself before we check back in. Good luck. All right, so I hope you had some time to look through the evidence and make your own thoughts and annotations. I'm going to share with you a little bit about what I noticed. In the evidence card A, the first thing that I noticed was it seems like the sample sites are spread out in the glacier sea. I see some close to shore, some out in the, the more middle of the sea, and there are six different locations. The other thing that I thought was really important was that it seems that the population was stable and also began to increase around 2000, just like our moon jelly populations. I sketched a graph to think about what this might look like. And to me, this reminded me very much of the moon jelly graphs that we have saw we have seen in previous lessons. In evidence card B, something that I noticed right away was that all the samples were taken by the shore. One thing that immediately came to mind was what about the rest of the sea? This does not seem as strong as evidence as evidence card A. I feel that these samples really don't give us a picture of the whole glacier sea and that is something we're looking for. I did notice that even though this may not be the strongest of evidence, it is backing up evidence card A, that the population was stable and then increasing around 2000, just like the moon jelly populations. In evidence card C, I noticed that there were less samples, so it is not quite as reliable as the zooplankton evidence, but I am happy to see that there is a population sample by the shore and also some further out. I saw that in this case, again, there was a change happening around 2000, but this time the population was starting to decrease. I sketched a graph to think about this. And I'm noticing this is looking similar to my other graphs, but with the exception of a decrease happening in 2000. It seems like a lot of changes were happening around 2000 in the glacier sea. And what does this all mean? What could have caused the size of the moon jelly population to increase? We now have seen some evidence for what was occurring to the zooplankton and the sea turtles during this time. But how does this help us? How does this information relate to the number of births and deaths in the moon jellies and why do we care? I want you to pause the video for a moment if you need to go back and look at the evidence one more time. And then I want you to write or draw Whatever it works for you, uh, you could find somebody to check in with, call that friend, find that family member um, or somebody around the house to check in with. And I want you to reflect on what your thinking is right now. You might have the same thinking as you did at the beginning, and that's totally okay, as long as it is backed up by the evidence. You might have changed your thinking, which is totally okay as well. You might have kind of changed your thinking or maybe have part that's the same and something that you're wanting to add on. Whatever your thinking is, I hope that you are using the evidence to guide that. Do you think that this increase was occurring because the number of births was increasing or perhaps that the number of deaths was decreasing? Or is both of these things happening at the same time? What is the evidence telling you? What does our learning help us understand about the zooplankton and sea turtle evidence? 
Make sure you pause the video and take this time to reflect. I'm really excited to hear from my own students about their thinking now that we've got to see more evidence, and I'm sure your teachers are too. So, just as before, we maybe have answered some questions, but there is still so much left for us to understand. I notice in the ecosystem, there are so many more organisms than just the zooplankton and the sea turtles. Are these having any effect? To learn more about the other populations of organisms in the ecosystem, I encourage you to check out the Arctic Ecosystem article if you haven't already. You can listen to me reading it in the voice recording, or if you have access to the article, you could read and annotate it yourself. Next time, we'll come back after having some time to think about what we think is occurring, and we'll start to investigate if there's any more to the story than what we understand so far. You guys have done such great work, and I'm so excited to see you using evidence and critical thinking to help us understand what is happening to the moon jellies. See you next time.